Jay here, Stratford Paddock. That's Joe Smith. And this is the Real Sociedad Europa League mm. preview. It's the big one, right? Crunch Forget match. crunch match. Forget about your Champions League. Yeah, anyone can play now. It's a load of rubbish. Mm. It's all about the Europa. And yeah. like you just said, this is a crunch game. Yeah. United need a victory. Not just a win, but a comfortable win. Mm -hmm to make sure that we don't have another tie in this competition. Because even though I love the Europa, the fewer games that you can have to win it, mm. the better. Of course, yeah. yeah. Well, you would always t t take a bye to the next round yeah. over having to play not just like another team, but presumably the best team in the competition now. <laughs> yeah. like, th this is why the Europa is better than the Champions League. Right. In the Champions League, you don't have teams dropping down from above. No. Per, like vultures yeah. sweeping down trying to pick at your carcass while you're already struggling in the Europa League now you've got Barcelona coming to have a, a go at the dregs as well it, it, didn't it on Super Mario when yeah. you, you run across the level and all of a sudden there's just flames dropping on you from above that's what this round is that we're trying to avoid so obviously we need to finish top of the group to uh, get a bye basically this, they don't call it a bye because they, what they do instead is they call this this round, they call it a qualifying round. So to avoid the qualifying round, which is really a bye to the last 16, we have to win the group. And Jay, I know what you're thinking, Sh you know, win the game, win the group, surely. Yeah. This is not that simple, Jay. Right. So because this, when you say it's not that simple, it's extremely complicated, if I'm being honest. It's actually very complicated. It's so convoluted. Let me go, I've got a list here of, yeah. um, his, this is the hierarchy of how teams are decided who finishes above who in the case that they have the same points at the end of the group. So right. currently, Real Sociedad have 15 points, yeah. Manchester United have 12 points. If we were to beat them, yeah. we would go on 15 points level with them. Yeah. Now, if we don't beat them, first of all, we're second. Yeah. We have to win. That's the Easy, first thing. simple, no drama. No worries there. Yeah. Now, is it, you know, let's say they beat us 1-0. If we beat them 1-0, what would happen? Well, let me go through this ranking. First of all, we'd, we'd go second. So the first thing that counts is not goal difference, Jay. Yeah. It's head-to-head. -head. Yeah. So points in head-to-head -head matches among tied teams. Okay. Now, because they've won every other game, yeah. we've won every other game, yeah. if we win this, yeah. the points in head-to-head -head would be three all. Right, okay. So we, that can't be a part of it. Right. So we go on to number two. It's the goal difference in head-to-head -head matches among tied teams. Yeah. So if we, So then they beat us 1-0 in the first leg. Yeah. So if we beat them 2-1 yeah. in this leg... Yeah. That would be enough because the third thing is goals scored in head-to-head -head matches, yeah. which in, in the case of a 2-1 right. would be two each yeah. because they won one the last time, lost 2-1 this time. We yeah. both scored two, yeah. so that's two each. So then we move down to the next one, which is the fourth stipulation, yeah. which is away goals scored in head-to-head -head matches okay. among tied teams. Right. In that scenario, yeah. we would have scored two away goals. Yeah. They would have scored one. Yeah. So basically, we have to outscore them by two goals or more. Yeah because then we've just scored more in the head-to-head. -head. Right. Or a 2-1, or any victory, stay with me, okay. where we win by one goal, but score two or more goals. Yeah. So 2-1, 3-2, 4-3, two, two, et cetera. Yep. We would go through okay. on that fourth stipulation, which is away goals scored in head-to-head -head matches among tied teams. Now, if it's a 1-1, one, one, if a 1-0, yeah. we go into the fifth stipulation, which is goal difference in all group matches, where Sociedad would beat us. Right. So one isn't good enough, a 2-1 is, anything above that also is, and a 2-0 would be good enough. All it's right. literally that simple, Jay. Okay, it's, it's sort of self-explanatory, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah? Yeah! <laughs> it's easy! And if you, if that isn't enough for you, go on Google and search for the 11 point right. plan. The, the, as can to we just how say, I know we need sorted. to move on, but like, you get into a point where here on this list is like disciplinary points yeah. and UEFA club coefficient. Yeah, so the last thing is UEFA club coefficient. So basically, who's the bigger team in Europe goes through? But we're not going to get to that because. <laughs> They've got a better goal difference than us, which would trump us in the event. Right. Of, uh, it's just, it is very bizarre. Anyway, I think we've explained that. Joe's explained that very well. And if you don't understand it, Neither then join the club, basically. Do you know what? Let's just batter him and then we don't have to worry about all the rest yeah. of that nonsense. Um, if we are going to win, there's a good chance we've Shaw's finest, mm. and I don't mean any of my children, Marcus Rashford. Yeah could play a big part in this. Um, got a big goal against Sheriff, an even yeah. bigger one against West Ham yeah. over the weekend. What have you made of Marcus Layla? He's United's goal scorer this season, isn't he, really? He is. Like, Martial's not playing, R Ronaldo's playing and not scoring, yeah. Bruno's not getting the goals he often does, Anthony's got three, which is decent, but 
you know, I don't. I think the next highest after Ronald, after Rashford is Anthony yeah. on three, and Rashford's got seven. So he's the one that we are relying on to get us goals. You can see the the, the past results there. Um, he just cutting off the the Ammonia game where he basically had. 10 chances and didn't score. Yeah. He went on a little run, didn't he, where chances didn't score in the Newcastle game, chances didn't score against Tottenham. Yeah. Um, and finally, he broke his little run against Sheriff with a header, scored again against West Ham with an excellent header again. He's our best, I think he's our best attacker this season. He's the most dangerous, he makes chances for himself. He's the only one that seems capable of making chances for himself. Ronaldo hasn't got the speed or really the confidence to go past a man. He hasn't really got the touch to sort of bring it down and, and turn and get away from anyone. Um, Sancho doesn't have the confidence either. Anthony seems to be relying on sort of balls in behind, whereas Rashford, he's regularly squares up his man, knocks it past him, has a shot. Yeah. And he's, he's comfortably our most dangerous player. He just needs to up that, that output a little bit in terms of his, his chances to goals ratio. But he's got seven goals in 13 games this season. He's not doing bad. No, he isn't. And it's good to see him getting headed goals as well. That wasn't really his forte. And two headed goals in the space of four days or three days or whatever it was uh, last week. You, you can't fault that. And, I, you know, I, I'm so relieved with Marcus because I was worried about him this season that he wasn't going to have the season he needed to have, the start to the season he needed to have after a pretty woeful campaign last one. Um, but he has done, like you say, he's amongst the goals. He's playing well. He looks like he's got his confidence back and he's adding a few other bits to his game. If he can just get to that point where, you know, he is taking, he's a little bit more clinical mm. with some of his chances, then I do feel like we'll have... You know the Marcus Rashford that we all know we can have because yeah. it, when he's on form, he's he's a fantastic player to watch. Before we move on to the predicted 11s, uh, people at home can send in your match predictions to paddockmatchday at gmail.com. Film yourself in landscape like, like Jay's there. Speak to the camera. Even that 30 seconds. Better, isn't it? Just say, I think Man United will win 2-1. I think Rashford's going to score. I think Anthony's going to score. I think Lindelof will come back in and get one uh, from a corner. Send that in to paddockmatchday at gmail.com to be featured on the watch along. Uh, you can see this, the, the ticker at the bottom there, paddockmatchday.gmail.com. We'll put that link uh, to the email address in the description as well. Yes, good stuff. Like Talking of predicted 11s, Joe, let's get into yours. Yeah. Give us your predicted 11. We can see it there on the screen. Mm -hmm. Talk us through why have you gone for, who have you gone through? For starters, the big one on the back four, I'll just yeah. pick out a couple of things that sort of stand out to me. Maguire dropped for Lindelof. Yeah. Why? Because... I think that if we against Spanish teams, Spanish football tends to be sort of higher lines, intricate midfield battles, and then the ball sort of spilling into space, people mm -hmm. running through on goal, a bit more freedom in the final third because such a heavy uh, amount of tactical lifting is done in that middle third. You, 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 you stack it out, you pack it out, you win that, and then you break from there. I think that Lindelof is better in the scenario where... Sociedad get the better of our midfield. If they play balls in behind, they play balls over the top. They put pressure on Manchester United. Lindelof is better running towards his own goal as a defender than Harry Maguire is. Maguire is, a, is a, I think, genuinely phenomenal back-to-goal defender. Like, ball's coming in, nodding it away. Ball coming in, nodding it away. Yeah. He's, as, he's as good as anyone at that, honestly. Yeah. But in terms of facing his own goal, yeah. when the ball's played over the top and he's running back to De Gea, he's below average. And I think if, if Sociedad are going to score, that's probably how they're going to do it. So if Lindelof is fit and available, I would go with the man that I think has the best chance of defending our weaknesses against Sociedad. No, I understand that. Um, you know, it kind of makes sense what you're saying. Front three, yeah. Rashford back over, well, back over and left. He's been playing there sporadically I know, this season, especially when Ronaldo starts. You've brought Andy back in, which, you know, again, if he's fit, I presume that would be the case. Um, were you tempted, or do you think Ten Hag will be tempted to drop Ronaldo? Didn't have the greatest the game against West Ham, but do you feel like, especially the fact, you know, he did get a goal in the Europa last time out, could play in a bit? Um, I th I've, I've, Go on. Firstly, what do you I, think love, I love that we've just skipped over the midfield because that is just our best midfield. Yeah, I, I don't feel the need to discuss that. So, yeah. is it? That front three, I've gone for that because... I don't think Sancho is bringing enough to the team for him to be worth starting in this game. Yeah. Therefore, I think we've got to go Rashford. Obviously, he's got to play. And then then what do you do? You either play Alanga or you play Ronaldo. And I think Ronaldo is better. I'm hopeful Anthony's fit uh, and he can come back in. But I think that front three gets the best 
you know, our best players in, in better positions than any other front three. I know you've got a different one, so let's go on to yours. Yeah, we'll look at mine. I've gone with Marcus down the middle. I've yeah. gone with Rash, uh, sorry, Sancho on the left, just talking on the front three. I've also brought in um, Harry Maguire. Mm. I think Maguire did enough against West Ham. Got a little bit of stick, especially in the ground. But I just don't think he needs dropping. I yeah. think putting him, keeping him in the team. I think as well, there's a little bit of a confidence thing for me as well mm -hmm. with Maguire. This is a must-win game. And, you know, however you want to word it, even with Varane injured, you're basically dropping him if you don't play him. True. You're just dropping Maguire because you're saying you're not good enough for us to, to win this game by the margin we need to win it by. So I, I know it shouldn't be just about keeping players happy, but I just feel he's done enough to keep his place. Um, although I do like Vitzel enough, but yeah, I go with Maguire or I think Tanago go with Maguire. Sancho, He's had a bit of a patchy season, mm. had a little bit of stick of late, but I think Ilanga playing the other day kind of reminded you a little bit. I know Tanar gave him credit, but that Sancho's not all bad. Mm. I don't think Ilanga did much at all, to be yeah. honest with you, against West Ham. And we see, at least with Sancho, you get glimpses. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's just finding that little bit of consistency during a game because obviously had some decent performances early on in the season, especially against the likes of Liverpool. And was it, I think it was Leicester when it, where he got his, uh, his other league goal. So yeah, I think he might just come back into it. He's had a little bit of a breather, hopefully, yeah. with him and Andy getting down the wings and Marcus Rashford, who we've spoken about already, we can cause real sausage had some problems. Because I think it, he sort of had to drop Sancho because of this thing that Shaw's mentioned and other people have mentioned of, if you're not playing well and if you get dropped. Yeah. I think it would have been pushing that that theory if he'd have kept playing Sancho through what has been pretty poor form. Maybe you're right though, he dropped him for the um, the game of the weekend against West Ham. Now you're back in, you've done your punishment kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Sort of sort it out. Yeah, because he was, I mean, against Chelsea got brought off because he was just woeful, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he was. He was, I mean, there was no, you know, it wasn't like him or he was knackered or anything. It was just like every time he touched the ball in that beginning, that second half, yeah. he gave it away to the point where I think we brought on Fred, I think, was it? Yeah. Like, he was just like, just basically take, on the right. yeah, take Sancho out of the firing line. Yeah. Um, looking at Real Sociedad, mm -hmm. decent enough um, campaign so far, fifth in the Liga, we know what they can do because the Beatles at Old Trafford, and it was weird that game because it's kind of acted as a bit of a reminder I feel for Ten Hag that you have to be careful how many players you rest at yeah. United because even though you're lucky, oh you've got great players in the squad and all that, you can't rest too many. Um, what sort of problems or issues or you know dangers do you think Sociedad can cause this Manchester United? We saw team? it at Old Trafford didn't we obviously? Yeah. That and I hate to boil it down to this because it's so basic and it's so like, it seems so simple and stupid that it can't really be real. But for whatever reason, Spanish teams are just fucking so hard to beat in Europe. Yeah. And I don't understand it. I don't know what it is about the, the Spanish style of play because this extends across pretty much all Spanish teams in all European competitions. Yeah. They just, especially later on in, in tournaments, in these big games, they just seem to have the number of non-Spanish teams. I, don't, I think the last 17 finals that have featured a Spanish team against a non-Spanish team, the Spanish team has won. That is not luck. That isn't like tossing a coin in its head 17 times in a row. <laughs> There's too many things at play for that to be a coincidence. So It's, pheno it's a phenomenal yeah. record. And United know better than anyone. You know, we've lost twice to Barcelona in the in the Champions League final. Yeah. We've lost to um, Villarreal. Sevilla. Sevilla, sorry, in the... Uh, no, Villarreal, in the, Villarreal, uh, yeah. Villarreal in the the final and, and Sevilla in the semi-final. Bill like, Bout. like, yeah. we've had our, you know, I mean, obviously, the big one, the 991 Cup Winners Cup final, we beat Barcelona. Which but might even be the last one that wasn't <laughs> That on that run, you know, <laughs> I don't know if it was. But I don't know. It, it is a phenomenal record yeah. that they've got, and you're right. It must be a mentality, confidence, just an ability to turn up for these games. Yeah. And maybe there's a little bit, and I certainly feel this with United, a little bit of complacency sometimes that's crept in. Mm. Certainly in the Europa League, when we've gone into these games, we think we'll beat these. Yeah, and we've we've been found wanting. Uh, with all that being said, give yeah. us your score prediction, my friend. I mean, I've got to go for a, a, a victory that would put us top of the group. I think. I think that has to be like, it'll feel a bit gutting if we don't get that, you know, because it almost has been built up to not a cup final, but like a sort of, this is a, a mini big game almost, isn't yeah. it now? Where you're avoiding possibly Atletico, yeah. Ajax, Barca, Sporting, I think it's Sporting or, or Benfica that look like they're going to go out. Like there's a lot of really good teams that could drop down. Um, so it's a big game. If I'm being honest, I think we'll really struggle. Oh, okay. I think I've seen United in these sorts of games so often over the last few years where you go, right, this, this is it. I'm thinking RB Leipzig away. Win this, get out of the group. Win this, get out of the group. We, we drew three all. Um, I just feel like it's going to be really difficult. And if I'm genuinely being honest, I think it'll be 1-1.
Wow, okay. I don't think we'll do it. I think we'll yeah. get in the knockout thing. Hopefully, we'll get a decent draw. We could still go on and win the competition. Yeah. But I can just see me f feel myself being sat there tomorrow night going, oh, I sort of knew this had happened. So 1-1, one, one, unfortunately. 2-0 uh, is enough for us to go through. As yeah, so it's 2-1. Yeah. Um, I, I think we'll get. I think we'll do it. I think we'll, I think we'll be in 2-0. I think we'll go through. I just, you know what it is with with this team and Eric tonight. I feel like when it's a game where you think United really need to win this one, mm. we do. Yeah. The Scousers after those the, the the defeat to Brentford, we needed a win. He got it. Yeah. Arsenal coming in, you thought we need to win this one. Mm -hmm. He got it. Do you know what I mean? Even the game at the weekend where Stan with Chelsea dropping points, you looked at it and you went, the Scousers dropped points. Mm. We need a win here. Mm. And it wasn't pretty, but we got it. Yeah. And I just have that feeling that Eric Ten Hag can get that, those wins when he really, it's one of those where you think, we need this. And I think that could be the scenario here. And I have a little bit of confidence that we can get over the line. I take on board everything you said, you're right. I just feel like there's something, something going on at the minute with Manchester United. And I feel this could be one of those games where you go, yes, so Eric, Eric's nil. got this. Yeah, I'm going to go 2-0. I'd love that. I yeah. love that. Uh, make sure you are joining us for the watch along. It'll be myself, Joe Smith, and Adam McCullough for the Real Sociedad watch along. We'll be there as well. Uh, we'll have reaction after the game. Mm -hmm. We'll have all the sort of build up and stuff. So make sure you are subscribing to the channel because we've got you covered for the entirety of that match. And make sure you're checking out some of the other videos as well on the channel. Joe, where can people find you? Joe Smith93 on Twitter. Or check out the Sloppy Joe's podcast as well. Sloppy Joe's, always good stuff watching those guys. Uh, you know where to find me. Make sure you are hitting that like button as well. That's been Joe. I've been Jay. This has been the Real Sociedad Europa League preview. Thanks for watching.